Welcome to this edition of Pre-Internet Plane Spotting, brought to you by Jetflix. Hi there, my name is Henry Tenby, and I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Pre-Internet Plane Spotting, in which we look at the fabulous Republic North Central Convair 580 operation during its 30-year reign from the 1950s through the 1980s. The Convairs were a fabulous aircraft. I had a personal connection to them. Uh, when I was young, in the early 1980s, I attended university in Grand Forks, North Dakota. UND had an aviation program, and I did a four-year bachelor degree at UND starting in 1983. And part of the, the appeal for going to UND was that it was in Republic Convair country. So on my spare weekends that I had time off, I would jump in my car and drive to Minneapolis Airport where I would photograph the Convairs. And I was so interested in the Republic Convair 580 operation that I actually, some of you might have seen this, I wrote an article on the operation for this uh, magazine called Prop Liner, which is a fabulous British magazine all about the love of classic prop aircraft. But back to the story of the North Central Republic Convair 580s, uh, the images that I'm about to share with you in this presentation were largely taken by a gentleman by the name of Rick Wargo. Uh, Rick Wargo was a lifelong Northwest Airlines employee at Republic as well, and he was a huge fan of the Convair 580s, and he lived for most of his career between Detroit and Minneapolis, and he flew on the Convairs all the time. And sadly, Rick uh, passed away in 2015, but I am happy to present his slides for your viewing enjoyment in this presentation. So special thanks to Rick in his memory for presenting these great images for us to now look back on. North Central Airlines was actually founded as Wisconsin Central Airlines in 1944. They were a local operator, and by the mid-1950s, they had built up a fleet of 32 Douglas DC-3s that we all know were absolutely fabulous aircraft. But when expansion came in the mid-1950s, of course, the DC-3s were a bit underpowered and undercapable of meeting the needs for the late 50s and into the 1960s. So the Convair was the aircraft that was chosen to replace the fleet of very capable DC-3s. During my four years of study in Grand Forks, there were many long weekends where I would take my car for the weekend to Minneapolis. The appeal, of course, was to spend time at the airport and savor the Convair 580 action, which was completely new to me as I was born and raised in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And seeing a large number of operational Convair 580s, it was like heaven, it was just nirvana. It was a mecca for me that I was so grateful to be able to experience. I only had one opportunity to fly on the Convairs, and that was a trip in 1987, which I'll tell you about at the end of the program. As you might have noticed, I am a collector of 35 millimeter aircraft slides. That's a great big photograph of a blown up slide of an Air Canada Vickers Viscount 700. If you have any collections of slides that you would like to sell, I'm a cash buyer, so please do contact me at the email shown on the screen. We're now going to get into the story of the North Central Republic Northwest Convair 580 operation, and I hope you enjoy the ride. Between 1966 and 1969, North Central Airlines converted some 31 Convair piston liners to 580 turboprop status. Therefore, our journey must start in the late 1960s with this picture of N3423, which was originally a Type 340 that North Central had acquired from Braniff in the mid-1960s, and it was delivered to Minneapolis as a Convair 580 in July of 1968, and it remained current with Northwest right through to the late 1980s. Here we have a shot of N4811 Charlie, which was a Convair 340 that was purchased from Delta in October of 1961. It was converted to Convair 580 status and redelivered back to Minneapolis in December of 1968 and remained current with Northwest right through to the late 1980s. This image was taken in Detroit in the early 1970s. 
And here we have a mid-1970s shot of N2728 Romeo, which was a Convair 340 purchased from the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Corporation. It was a VIP machine, and it was purchased in 1964. It was converted to Convair 580 status and re-delivered back to Minneapolis in May of 1969 and remained current right through to Northwest Airlines in the late 1980s. And this is a typical passenger view from the gate on your way to the Convair 580 gates, you'd walk past the North Central DC-9 that would be parked closer to the main breezeway. Of course, the three Convairs in the background are all North Central. This is taken at Detroit in 1974. And here's another nice shot of N2728 Romeo. It's taken from the ramp level. This is the passenger view from the door that the passengers were let through to board the aircraft airside. So you would just simply walk as your eyes show here towards the air stairs of the aircraft. What a fabulous way to travel. Detroit, 1974. We have three Convairs in the north central Convair gate area. N3423 is the aircraft closest to the camera, and the aircraft are awaiting their passengers for their outbound flights. And what a fantastic view this must have been from the breezeway as you walk towards that area. And this would be a typical small-town America airport approach shot from the mid-1970s. It's a North Central Convair 580 on short finals. Not sure where it's taken, but it's most likely taken in Minneapolis or Detroit. If you listen closely, you can just hear those engines. Fantastic. Detroit, 1974. Here we have N4824 Charlie at the gate awaiting passengers. This was originally a Convair 440. It was purchased from Delta Airlines in May of 1966. It was converted to Convair 580 status and re-delivered to Minneapolis in July of 1967. Like many of its other stable mates, it remained current with Northwest right through until the late 1980s. Here we have a very nice early 1970s apron view of N2042. This particular aircraft had quite an interesting history. It was an original Convair 440 purchased from National Airlines in January of 1963. It was converted to Convair 580 status and re-delivered to Minneapolis in August of 1968. It was sold to the JD Aircraft Supply Company in May of 1981 and was onward sold to Kelowna Flight Craft as C-GKFW in March of 1982. It is believed to have remained in Canada for a good number of decades operating for Purolator as a freighter. On April 26, 1979, North Central and Southern Airways merged to form a new entity called Republic Airlines. As such, this Convair 580 is seen in 1979 at Detroit with the new Republic titles and the old North Central color scheme. This particular aircraft, N4805 Charlie, had quite an interesting history. It was purchased as a Convair 340 from Delta Airlines back in September of 1960. It was converted to Convair 580 status and re-delivered to Minneapolis in November of 1967, and it remained current with Northwest Airlines right through to the late 1980s. And here's a nice shot of N2728 Romeo as viewed from a 727-200 on pushback in Detroit, 1979. And this is a typical view through the windows in flight, looking at the Allison engine earning its keep and the standard Aero Products propeller spinning its way, cutting its way through the atmosphere. It's a fabulous view I would never grow tired of. And here we have Ship 504 starting engines. Starboard engine is running, port side's just firing up. She is probably pulling away from the gate area at Detroit, 1979, cloudy day, but a nice day to be at the airport watching the action. And here we have a very nice view taken through the gate windows of Ship 509 in between flights. The aircraft is undoubtedly being serviced. It's a nice sunny day in Detroit, and the color scheme looks absolutely fantastic, just beautiful.
And here we have a very beautiful shot of Convair 580 N2729 Romeo, taken in Detroit, 1980, being ground serviced between flights. This particular Convair was purchased also from the 3M company in June of 1964. It was converted to a Convair 580 and re-delivered to Minneapolis in August of 68 and remained current with Northwest right through to the late 1980s. Again, Detroit, 1980, here we have N969N, which is, again, a former corporate aircraft. It's a GM aircraft that was a 440 that was acquired by North Central in May of 67, and it remained current with Northwest Airlines right through to the late 1980s. This image was photographed on the maintenance wrap at Minneapolis Airport in 1980, and it is N4805 Charlie, which was a Convair 340 that was originally purchased from Delta Airlines in September of 1960. It was converted to 580 status and redelivered to Minneapolis in November of 67 and remained current with Northwest right through to the late 1980s. Here we have N3418 at Detroit in early 1981. This particular aircraft was a 340. It was purchased from Braniff and immediately converted to Convair 580 status, and it was delivered to Minneapolis for the first time to go into service with North Central in February of 1968. The aircraft remained current right through to its final years with Northwest in the late 1980s. And here's a very nice shot of a Republic Convair 580 being ground serviced in 1981 at Detroit Airport, typical scene of the day. Here's a very nice 1981 view of N90857 at Detroit in 1981. This was a Convair 340. It was purchased from Continental Airlines. It was one of the first batch, actually, back in January of 1959. One of the first batches, actually. And it was converted to 580 status and delivered to Minneapolis in January of 68. And it was sold to Simmons Airlines in February of 1985. And here's a very nice view. It's a nose-on view from the gate area. Beautiful light of ship 546 Detroit on a nice afternoon bathing in the sun. Just beautiful. She's awaiting her passengers. Here's a very nice apron shot of N3423 taken in 1981 at the Minneapolis overhaul facility. N3423 was the aircraft that was purchased from Braniff and was immediately converted to Convair 580 status and remained current with Northwest to the late 1980s. This aircraft has a bit of a different history. N7517 Uniform came from Canada. It was a 340 that was purchased from Texaco, Canada as CFTCL in February of 1965. It was converted to Convair 580 status and it remained in service with Northwest right through into the late 1980s. This picture is seen at Detroit in 1981. This is a nice view from the windows. We can see the passenger door is in the process of closing, and I guess the engines are just about to start summer 1981 at Detroit. This particular aircraft was the corporate hack. It was originally registered N2041 and was acquired from National Airlines in 1963. In 1975, it was converted to a 17-seat VIP airplane for company use and corporate charter work and it was sold to the Jet America Corporation in October of 1984. And the color scheme shown here was its very last colors while it was in operation with Republic. In 1983, Republic Airlines introduced a new color scheme, a modern scheme, which looked very attractive on the Convairs, and they were all painted in this terrific color scheme. This scheme remained in effect for several years until the company adopted the all-white color scheme in the mid-1980s. Here's a great shot of N4822 Charlie on the Minneapolis maintenance ramp in 1984. This Convair 440 was purchased from Delta in 64. It was converted to 580 status and redelivered to Minneapolis in December of 67 and remained current with Northwest right through to the end of service of the type. Here we have the super rare, short-lived, full white Republic color scheme that was introduced in 1985. It only remained like this for one year because in January of 1986, Northwest Airlines purchased Republic 
and the aircraft adopted Northwest colors, as shown here. The formerly shown aircraft was N968N, which was purchased from GM in 1967, while the aircraft shown now is N2729 Romeo, which was purchased from 3M. In 1964, and both aircraft remained in service with Northwest right until the final retirement of the type in the late 80s. Here's a fabulous elevated view from the summer of 1986 of 3423, which was the former Braniff aircraft. Notice that the color scheme has been modified to meet the Northwest look. The aircraft has lost the thick aquamarine sheet line above the dark blue sheet line, and the aircraft has gained Northwest bright red tail. And here we have some nice images taken in the winter of 86-87, showing the Northwest Convairs on the old Republic North Central ramp. You'll notice that some of the aircraft have white stripes on the tail. It's presumed that those aircraft were retired, whereas the ones without remained in active service. So the retired Convair 580s remained parked here at Minneapolis until such time that new owners were found. About a year after this picture was taken, the entire Convair 580 operation went down into the history books. The final date was November the 30th, 1988, when ship 517 flew the last ever Convair operational flight for Northwest Airlines. It was flight 1441 from Central Wisconsin Airport to Minneapolis. And that marked the end of an amazing history with an amazing aircraft with an amazing series of airlines. So I'd like to give you a bit of a history on when North Central first got their original Convair fleet. Some of you might remember this magazine, Prop Lighter Magazine, published uh, in the UK uh, up until current day, actually. But I was a contributor back in the 1980s, and I wrote an article in this particular issue on the history of North Central's Convair operation. But essentially, the story goes that the president of North Central Airlines, Hal Carr, was evaluating the Convair against the Fokker F-27. In 1958, the CAB had awarded North Central Airlines an additional 2,000 route miles in their region, and these were routes that were being let go by Braniff International and Continental Airlines and Western, I believe. And he needed an airplane that would be just as good as the aircraft that the passengers were used to on the other airlines. And at the time, North Central only had DC-3. So it was agreed that a larger, faster, bigger airplane was needed. So he had a choice. It was go with the used aircraft in the form of a Convair twin, or go with a new aircraft. The new aircraft, the Fokker F-27 at the time, was priced at a million dollars, and it had a couple of drawbacks beyond its high price. Number one, uh, the engines were non-reversible. The Rolls-Royce Dart engine was then a fairly new engine, and it wasn't in wide use in North America at the time, in the 1950s, the Allison 501 engine powered the Hercules and the Electra and was much more widely accepted by operators in the US. So, and the fact that the engines and propellers provided reverse thrust because the propellers were, or the blades were reversible was another big benefit in addition to the fact that the engines provided a lot more horsepower. The Convairs, the twin engine Convairs, could also seat 44 passengers versus a maximum of 40 for the F-27. So uh, Bob uh, Halcar struck a deal with Bob Six at Continental Airlines for the purchase of five used Convair 340s, and uh, the, pre the price was $325,000 per airplane, but North Central had to modify the aircraft. They put in new uh, nickel-cadmium batteries, they put in a new avionics and a new interior, amongst other things, and that brought the price up to just a little over 400,000 US dollars a piece in 1958, 1959, which was still less than half of the million dollar price tag for the new F-27s. If you'd like to read more about the North Central Convair history as the aircraft and fleet progressed through North Central, uh, Republic and Northwest, check out my article in uh, this issue of Prop Liner Magazine from 1987, issue number 32, and you'll see that I provided quite an in-depth um, history of these aircraft uh, over the years. And I should point out that the person who helped me 
with, uh, with compiling this report, which also includes a fleet, a complete and detailed fleet list, a total of 36 different conveyors were operated by uh, North Central Republic Northwest over the uh, three decades that they were in service. But the special person who helped me with, it, with, with this um, article at the time was a fellow by the name of Daryl Thorseth. And he was an, a longtime Northwest Republic employee who took a great interest in the aircraft and uh, was most helpful. I should also read something that I've got here in the article. It says here, ac according to me, quote, the Convair, despite its charm and long history of excellent service, does not reflect the image which Republic wishes to project. So that's what Republic Airlines thought about the Converse. They didn't want to help me with the article, but Northwest Airlines was more than helpful. And again, Daryl Thorseth was a godsend in preparing my article. So check it out. You might find this to be a very interesting piece of history for you. I had a chance to fly on three different Northwest Convair 580s on my trip down to Florida for slide photography for the spring break. So we actually flew on a Northwest Air Orient 727-100 from Seattle to Minneapolis. And then in Minneapolis, we boarded uh, our first Convair and that took us direct to Detroit. And that was flight number 964. And I was in seat 6A. And what was kind of interesting is we had a, uh, according to the notes on the back of, of the boarding pass, uh, the flying time was about 50 minutes, but I'll just read you some of the, from my notes. So at 8.02 a.m., the generator was started up with the typical whine. 8.03, the tractor pushed us back. And at 8.06, our starboard engine prop was spinning. 8.07, our port side, left side engine was, was turning. And we were number two for departure. And uh, that was behind a Republic Express jet stream. And we actually throttled up at 8.12 a.m. So it was 10 minutes after the first engine start. And there was a 35 second separation between the jet stream and our Convair departure. As I say, we were 49 minutes airtime to Detroit. And uh, on the way back, I actually had two different Convair flights. Uh, on the way back from Florida to Seattle, uh, I got to fly in two different aircraft. Uh, first of all, we flew from Detroit to Wausau, Central Wisconsin Airport, and that was on 4824 Charlie, flight number 338 on April the 7th. Now, I'm sorry, not, I'm stand, I stand to be corrected. It was 1987, April the 7th, 1987, and that was a one hour and 17 minute flight, actually. And we were on the ground uh, in, in uh, Wausau for some time, and then we boarded flight number 879 and 2728 Romeo uh, for a dusk flight to Minneapolis. And I've, again, I've got some interesting notes on the back of my boarding pass, and I'll share some of them with you. So I was seated near the rear engine, and I could see the uh, uh, strobe catching the belly as it was rotating because it was a dusk flight. And... Um, I asked the captain if he enjoyed his flights on the Convairs, and he told me that he enjoyed these because they are from a different era. And there were 10 passengers on the flight, and uh, it was a clear sky, and then the night quickly slipped into darkness. So there you go, that was it. I had uh, three flights um, on the Convair, and this is a picture taken in the interior cabin of the of the Convair 580 and you can this was the color scheme that the aircraft were reconfigured with when they were converted to 580s between 1966 and 1967 68 that that green aqua interior was the uh, north central color palette and as you can see only very small number of passengers so it was great that wherever we're we wanted so i had some very nice memories if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Please click the thumbs up button. That would be so fantastic. Thank you very much. If you have a personal story that's related to flying on Northwest or North Central or Republic on the Convairs, please leave a comment and tell me about it. I'd love to hear about your own personal experience with these fabulous aircraft. That's so awesome. A little bit about myself. My name is Henry Tenby. I'm the founder of Jetflix TV, which is a streaming service for aviation fans. If you enjoy 
full-length classic airline videos. We have over a thousand aviation videos that you can watch anytime, anywhere. And I've got a special offer for you in the pop-out in the upper right-hand corner so that you can check out Jetflix TV as it might be of interest to you. Thank you for watching, bon voyage and happy travels, and we'll see you on the next video.